Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to World War III. A lot of stuff to get to. I might just keep this very simple and very on the Second Amendment topic because that's been a big thing. We've seen Joe Biden tweet certain things about it. We've seen a lot of liberal people kind of confused by, you know, why won't you accept a assault weapons ban you can keep your pistols, just take the assault weapons ban, you know, we need to ban them, there's too many school shootings, things like that. I'm going to explain why many people in America are scared to have any sort of ban on any sort of assault weapon, and it has nothing to do with us wanting more school shootings, it has to do with the way a sort of no guns process would work. And I want to talk about it because this is very confusing to people. You take a look at Joe Biden and what he says. Congress needs to pass universal background checks, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines, and eliminate gun manufacturers immunity from liability. So you say that sounds good, right? The liberal message to conservatives or you know, the, the, the gun control message to people who are for the Second Amendment is you're going to keep your pistols. You're keeping your pistols. We're just trying to eliminate the guns that you really don't need for hunting, right? That's the narrative that they run with. And then they're shocked by people who believe in the First Amendment saying, no, that's not what we don't want that to happen. We're deathly afraid of that happening. Why are People deathly afraid of just universal background checks, assault weapons getting banned, because if we were to in America, and I'm not saying it's going to happen now in a year or in five years, but if we were in America to eventually, you know, eventually get to the point of a gun ban, it does not happen by Joe Biden waking up tomorrow based based on where we currently are at politically with, jo with, with what America's laws are on guns. It doesn't happen with Joe Biden waking up tomorrow and saying, I want to ban guns. It's impossible. So when you talk about a gun ban, a full gun ban, we, we've seen countries do it. Australia, for example, you know, it's so unfortunate. I don't want to harp on it too much because I don't know the whole situation in Australia. I've heard it from both sides, but the bottom line is the Australian government committed major human rights violations against the citizens. The citizens have no right to bear arms. Uh, during the, It was during the pandemic. It's very tough for governments to handle pandemics. I'm not trying to speculate too much on what happened, on what happened but the Australian situation where there were major human rights violations, the government completely took over. We're trying to avoid that, and I am a huge advocate for the Second Amendment. I think every citizen should 100% have a right to a gun, but then they hit me with, oh, what about school shootings? We're trying to save people. We're trying to keep people safe. I understand all of that, but you have to, you have to think about it like this. If we were to be at a point in America, and it's not going to happen tomorrow, but I'm just saying, if we were ever to get to a point where we straight up ban guns, it doesn't happen by Joe Biden tomorrow announcing we're going to ban all guns. It happens in a process. There's multiple steps that you know, have to be taken. It's just like a basketball player scoring 30 points. He doesn't just shoot the ball once and he scores 30 points. He makes a three. Then he goes to the free throw line. He makes two free throws. Then he makes a layup. Now he's up to seven points. Then he makes a step back three. Now he's up to 10 points. It's a process to get to 30 points, just like it would be a process to ban guns in America. And this is the, a major first step is banning assault weapons. See, it starts with assault weapons, but where does that lead? It's like we're arguing doing the wrong thing. Liberals are saying, all we want to do is ban the assault weapons. You don't need them for hunting. You don't need them to protect your house. You can use pistols. You can use other things. That's all we want to do. And people who believe in the Second Amendment are saying, is that really all you want to do? Because what happens when you get this passed, you get more confident, and in two years you come back and you say, you know what? We're going to restrict guns even more. Now you can only have a certain caliber bullet, a certain pistol right? It's the next step. This is a situation where if you, if if it comes down to it, and again, it's not going to happen anytime soon, but I'm just saying, if you wanted to eventually ban guns in America, there are people that do, they're all left, but there are people that do want to ban guns in America. This is a major process that requires multiple steps. And the first step is banning assault weapons. 
And that's why there are people that are concerned. We don't want school shootings. We do not want that. Nobody wants that. But I also think it's really reckless when people say, look at how many people died from school shootings. Look at how many lives we could have saved. Why don't you also factor in the people that defend themselves when someone tries to break into their home and they save their own life or they save someone else's life. It's so, you can't just pick and choose and say, well, 30 kids died. If we would have banned guns, everyone would have been saved. What about, you know, the one kid that got saved by a gun being there? You know, we should have the right to defend our home. And I'm saying this is a very complicated topic that many people on the left are trying to make extremely simple by saying, you are a coward, you're disgusting for not wanting to ban assault weapons, you don't need an assault weapon to hunt, you don't need, a, you know, these assault weapons are so deadly, they're killing children in schools, they're using an emotional argument when it is so much more complex because, I'm again, there, the, the real argument is, is this the end? Is this it? If we allow Joe Biden to ban assault weapons, is that the end? Or in five years, when someone even more radical comes into office, do they push the limits even more? And then see how it's a process, guys. Again, when a basketball player scores 30 points, he makes a three, then he makes a free throw, then he makes a two, he's at six points, then he gets to eight points. He doesn't shoot the ball once and get and, and score 30 points. It's a process. Banning guns in America would be a process that would take multiple different laws. And this would be the first major law. So the, again, I hope I'm doing a good job explaining this. The media really does a terrible job because they make it to where it's like, well, you've got people on the right who are just you know, disgusting, they don't, you know, they want assault weapons, you know, they don't need them, whatever, and then people on the left just trying to save lives, when it's actually way more complex than that. Should we have background checks? Absolutely. Should there be, an, you know, do, should citizens own some of these high caliber guns? Probably not. But if you were to ask me, would I support banning assault weapons at this point with where our political climate is? I wouldn't because I'm scared about what's next. How far will they push it? They get the assault weapons ban. What's next? I agree. Citizens, you know, probably shouldn't have these massive caliber weapons, you know, have a pistol to defend yourself, have, you know, some, you know, semi-automatics. There sh probably should not be any automatics, but... Unless you have like a you know a government license, things like that, a strict background tech, uh, check, uh, you know I don't think criminals should have guns. But again, this is such a slippery slope because if we enable this, it's really like a gateway law. It's a gateway law that will enable them to get more aggressive and pass uh, even stricter gun laws in America. Again, the thing with Australia during the pandemic, guys, pandemics are so tough to manage, and I'm not saying. All I'm saying with Australia, I've heard it from both sides. Some of the, some people say, oh, they did a good job. Other people say, the bottom line is that we know for a fact the Australian government committed just ridiculous human rights violations against their citizens. And, you know, what, what helped enable that was the fact that the citizens did not have a right to bear arms. You also have to remember... How I view the right to bear arms is kind of like a checks and balances with the government, meaning you're not going to give the government too much power because you have a right to a gun, a weapon to defend yourself, not just against a burglar, but against the government. It's a checks and balance system, guys. That's how I view it. I've never heard anyone else say that. I view it as kind of like a, a, a checks and balance in terms of power. We can't give all of the power to the government. You know, we can't be so reliant on the government. So that's kind of the whole thing with the Second Amendment, why people are scared to even just have these laws where it's banning assault weapons, where you've got all these liberal peoples, people saying, whoa, we don't want to take your guns. We're not taking your pistols. We're never going to do any of that. Yeah, right now you're not going to do any of that. What happens when you get this law passed and you get a little overzealous? You get a little greedy. You get a little, you know, maybe someone even more to the left goes into... Because really, Biden, if you look at Biden on a global scale, is probably more conservative than he is liberal. Uh, so, so imagine if some serious actual left person in 5, 10 years gets into power already with the assault weapons ban at, you know, as is the damage they could have, they could do on our gun laws. So that is scary to think about. That is the real situation that's going on. It's not an argument. See, the media is painting it. They're saying, well, 
you know, you you don't need this for hunting. We just want to ban the assault weapons. That's it. We're not going to take your guns, right? That's how they're painting it when really we need to sit down and talk about this and be like, listen, if we do ban the assault weapons, we have to have an, ins uh, an assurance that there will be nothing further. Nothing further than that, if you want to tweak it a little bit, but in terms of the right to bear arms, that is a non-starter. The citizens will always have the Second Amendment in the United States. That will not change. So I just wanted to talk about uh, the thing that happened there with Biden. We've also got this here, Rob Reich in The Guardian today, warning of the grave dangers of Elon Musk's free speech views. He frames it as a billionaire controlling the internet, but that's what we have now. Right, exactly. Like, can't we try something different? We've already got crazy censorship in terms of politics on Twitter. Why can't we try something different? Because this Robert Reich, you go to his profile, 1.4 million followers, half of them are fake. It's some old white dude. He's probably got a bunch of white guilt. Berkeley professor. Oh, that's just great. Yeah, he's teaching our children. Amazing. Just some old dumbass white dude who's oozing out white guilt. He probably says, I, I hate myself. I hate myself. Elon Musk. Oh my God. They're going to actually bring in free speech on the internet. How horrible is that? Those people are fucking pathetic. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for swearing. Second Amendment reminder. And there's the gay pride flag. That's a dead giveaway. Clinton will take your guns. He didn't. Democrat Congress will take your guns. It didn't. Obama will take your guns. He didn't. Biden will take your guns. He isn't. Same lies for decades. Again, you're not getting the actual point. There, Biden has zero chance to take the guns based on the current laws. This will be a long, this, this will be like a decade long thing a multi-step process. Again, when you score 30 points, you don't make a 30-point shot. You got to hit some threes. You got to hit some twos. You got to hit some free throws. You got to pass some laws if you want to get the guns banned. Biden, these people do not understand they're arguing the wrong thing. I agree with you. No, Joe Biden, based on where we currently are with what laws are in place, has no chance to take away the Second Amendment from the American citizens, but he can kickstart it. He can kickstart it. And in 10 years down the line, we can go back and say, this is what started it. These people do not understand. There's a lack of understanding in their heads on how these processes work. There really is. It's unfortunate. Reportedly in Shanghai. So guys, I'm sure many people know now. I mean, with me in China, I'm going to... China is dealing with the uh, pandemic. Their numbers are up right now. And there's a video of China. And you can take a look at it right there at the screenshot. There's a bunch of cats in those bags. They're rounding up all the cats and they're putting them in those bags. And in that video, it's a Chinese person just filming the bags. And you can just hear the meow, meows. And people are like, oh my God, this is terrible. You've got, you know, China shutting everything down. People are like, oh my God. Like... Someone like me who I'm upset. I follow China a lot. It's not surprising. That's what China does. They're communists. You know, there's no, you've got. I saw a video of a citizen like going crazy. Like you're you're taking me out. You're putting me in this camp because I'm sick. How am I going to pay for things? It doesn't matter. That's China. And then they just have a video. And I'm not trying to laugh or anything like that. This is just what happens. There's just like. 30 cats in each of these bags and it's just a Chinese person filming and you just hear meow, meow, meow and it's just like, oh, oh my goodness. But no, that's China. <laughs> that's China. Their numbers are up. They have to, it's full dictatorship. Ooh, yes, communism. Yes, maybe, I've, I've seen so many Twitter accounts that support communism. Listen, maybe you can starve to death for the betterment of the government. Yes, Joseph Stalin Starved all those Russian people. It was for the betterment of the people. Oh, yes. Such innovation. Amazing. They but Listen, all the people on Twitter, all these alt-left people that support communism, why don't you just starve to death? It supports the government. It's for the good. Guys, it's good for the government. You're selfish when you eat food. You are selfish. Oh, my God. Joseph Stalin would be disgusted. You're going to eat McDonald's? Are you kidding me? sacrifice for the government for the good for the good of the government you've got to sacrifice and then we've got this uh, Charlie Kirk can't tweet but the Chinese Communist Party can Jack Pelosi 
can't tweet, but the Kremlin can. Members of Congress and the former president can't tweet, but the Taliban can. And of course, you understand all those people they're talking about that can't tweet, they're on the right and they can influence young people, can't have any of that, but no, the Taliban's fine. You want to know why the Taliban's allowed on Twitter? Because the Taliban's not going to convince any, you know, 17-year-old kid to become a Republican and to vote re Republican, but these people that are getting banned, they can. Why is the Kremlin allowed on Twitter? Because the Kremlin's not going to convince any young American to vote Republican, or any American for that matter, to be Republican, but these other people like Donald Trump, like Charlie Kirk, they're Republican. They're trying to convince people to be Republican. They're spreading their own propaganda. Can't have that. But you know what? The Kremlin's fine. Oh, the Chinese Communist Party. They have a, an official Twitter account, I'm sure, right? They're fine. There's no issues there, guys. I'm going to save some of this stuff for tomorrow. We got a lot of stuff here, but I'm going to save it. Uh, but yeah, guys, Second Amendment. We're not arguing the right thing. It's a buildup. It's a process. Banning assault weapons kickstarts that process. I would be open to hearing a democratic argument if we put safeguards in place to where they're not going to touch it after. And then they use these sort of, oh, you know, you school shootings happen, things like that. And it's like, yeah, I know it's horrible. School shootings happen. But what about all of the times the guns actually save people's lives that are in danger? They never talk about that, do they? Oh, they don't have any statistics on that. Yeah, no, no. But then they talk about how Australia has no school shootings. Yeah, Australia also has no rights. Their citizens, uh, complete horrible human rights violations. I don't, again, I don't know exactly because I've heard people defending how Australia... Again, handling a pandemic is extremely challenging, especially a novel pandemic. Uh, but... Australia and their human rights. It's a perfect example. There's a checks and a balances. We can't let the government have too much power. That's why we have the right to bear arms. That's why we have amendments in place that protect our rights. And we can't mess with those. Not now, not ever. And then they try and say, oh, let's modernize the amendments, aka let's give more power to the government and take it away from the citizens. Yeah, you didn't think I knew what you were talking about when you said that? Come on. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.